all poetry. I am not a poet. And this is not a poem. Because a poem has sonic slurs that speak and seep into our souls. Because a poet thinks in themes and their thoughts can quench a thirst. A thirst for words that mean more than what they say. A thirst for feelings you can't feel on any normal day. And no matter what I do, my head cannot combine language that way. And poets are strikingly melodramatic, making a scene out of merely anything, whether it be a coffee mug or a harmless hug, or even the way you say their name. And I promise I am never that way. <laughs> okay, maybe I am, but what 17-year-old isn't melodramatic? They both drink excessive amounts of sugary coffee, they tend to both fall to the clutches of insomnia, and I know I only saw you across the restaurant helping out the young couple seated at the darkly lit booth, but I think I'm in love with you. <laughs> I can't say I relate. One thing I don't share with poets is how naive we can be because poets believe in everything. They believe that everything is poignant. They can twist a bubblegum wrapper on the street into an elaborate plastic bow that will catch every brown, blue, and green passing eye. And me, I'm infrequently skeptical at best. If you want to tell me that my smile is as white and piercing as newly laid snow on a December morning, you will need to be profoundly persuasive because I'm not going to have some turtlenecked versifier pick up a crinkle bubblegum wrapper and make a metaphor for my life story simply because I do not exist to wrap my arms around you when you are chewed and spit out onto the street. Sorry, that was out of line. <laughs> I do love you. So even though poets elude me, I am sickeningly envious because a poet can bring mountaintops to tears. They can make hummingbirds stop mid-flight. They can hush an entire meadow with the unbearable Atlas holding the world on his shoulders kind of heaviness, or lack of, for that matter, in their voice. That kind of heaviness that a teasing noose carries as it digs into your slumped shoulders, that kind of heaviness that weighs down on the base of your forehead against your cortex, making cognizance quite difficult to muster, that kind of heaviness that makes your bed sheets a little warmer. I think that's why people snap cautious fingers together after a reading, because they don't want to disturb the suspended weight. They can make you want to voyage across every known body of water to find that little pocket of uncharted stillness where every crumpled bubblegum wrapper is replaced with huckleberry bushes because those seem like such a nicer thing to write about and I could write about fathers, daughters, crooked teeth, stagnant waters and I'm not a poet because poets do not exist. Because how can someone be a poet while others simply deem listeners when even the listeners in their lifetime have produced something equally as beautiful like perfectly painted lips or crimped duvets from a glorious night of deep sleep or laughter that feels like bubbles are floating behind your eyes because that is beauty and I do not conjure poems from my left hand. I simply state beauty that everybody already knows because everybody knows that poets are trying to say whether it be about a yellow wood or a captain who died on his own starboard, we all understand the raw, unprecedented expression of a poet. Because we are all poets. We are all listeners. None of us are poets. None of us are listeners. And someday, I want to tell the world what it means to be beautiful. Someday, I want to understand how wonderful it must be to look at you and me and mosquitoes and iced tea with utter reverence and potency. But like I said before, I am not a poet, and this is not poetry.